Hey guys, so I'm gonna go over one method of doing authentication with JWT tokens and cookies. Now, my two goals here with this is to make a super simple system. And the reason for that is when you add more complexity, it just adds more corner cases and bugs that can pop up. And especially with security, that's not a great thing. So I wanted to create it as simple as possible, not a lot of extra things going on. And two, second goal with this, is whenever I'm doing a request, I'd like not to have to fetch that user to see if they have the right permissions. What I'd like to do is store the permissions in the JWT token so it saves me one database call. Now, this might be a goal that can't get met, but I'd like to try. So keep that in mind when I go through this. Those are the two goals that I'm kind of trying to achieve with this setup. So here we have the client, here we have the server. Now, the first time you'll get a JWT token is when the client passes in an email and password. So this will authenticate on the server if they put in the right email and password. What we will do is two things. First create a JWT token and then we will also store that JWT token in a database table. Um, so we're going to be creating a table that's just like a big list of all the valid JWT tokens. So whenever they log in we're creating the token putting that in the table and then giving them the token back. And then that token will be stored in the cookies. Um, also good to note this cookie is going to be HTTP only and all that stuff so it's secure. Um, the other thing is we're going to want to store something like any type of permission that we want. So maybe if they're an admin or if they need specific rights, that sort of thing, we're going to put in the token. So then whenever the client makes a request, um, this is what's going to happen. So they make a request to the server. We're going to come down here. These are the steps that are going to happen. So the first is we're going to check if the JWT token is valid. Now by that I mean we're going to check. Uh, we're going to decode the token and validate it using a JSON web token library and just make sure the right secret was made and the token is not expired. So the encryption's good and it hasn't expired yet. If that's the case, we know we have just been given a valid JWT token. We want to make sure that this JWT token is in our database table that we created up here. Remember how we said we added a token when they logged in? We want to make sure the token is there and it hasn't been revoked or deleted for some reason. And I'll go over in a second why we might delete a token from that table. But we make sure, so we'll make one database call here where we'll just check and make sure the token exists. It's there in the table. Um, if these two uh, permissions you know, check out, then we're cool. We, have, we can trust the token basically. Um, and then right here what we're going to do is we're going to look at the contents, the body of the token, and check if they're an admin. And if there are an admin, we can then fetch the data um, correctly. Now it might not be any kind of like permission I want to check inside the token would be the last check we would do. And then if any of these fail before, we would just say, hey, this failed or whatever. So it would go through these checks every time it makes a request. So with this, you will be doing one extra check here against the table. But the reason why this is important is um, sometimes a JWT token will go stale. Um, and so the cases for that is, for example, let's say um, I didn't start as an admin, but let's say I became an admin. Then you need to make sure to update the JWT token. So whenever we like update the value of um, the user, we don't want the token to go bad. So what we do is we issue a new token and then we invalidate the old one. And we invalidate the old one by deleting it from the table. Um, and then, for example, if someone resets their password, you might want to delete any tokens um, associated with their account, that sort of thing. So it's good to have a table where you can kind of revoke access to any token that you want. So that's why I have that check going there. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So as I said, this is a pretty basic setup, but that's how it would work. Each request, we do these three checks. And then if they all check out, we give the data back to them. And now we're not always going to be checking for permissions, right? If some endpoints don't need to be admins or whatever, this is only happens if we want that import endpoint. Or uh, this is all I'm, I'm going to be using for GraphQL. But if you're doing REST to endpoint um, or you know the query or mutation that you're going to run, if that permission needs to be checked, they will check it here. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of this setup, if you think it's good, what you would recommend changing. 
um, if anything I'm gonna go over in tomorrow's video I'm gonna go over like a few different ways how you can tweak this to get different things maybe you want to do seek a new secret per user maybe you want to store the JWT tokens in the table slightly differently there's a few different maybe you want to use a refresh token like there's lots of different um, variations that you can do based on this so I'm gonna go over a few that I, I was thinking about trying out tomorrow what I think about those but yeah let me know what you think of this current setup um, and I'm gonna implement one of these guys very soon so yeah thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video